Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Ultra Series Circuit. We are here the 2019 season and we are finally getting into the final of the Ultra Series Circuit today. We've caught up with all of our matches on the channel over the last week. If you haven't seen them, I'll link a card up here. You can check those out, go back and see the progress of the top eight. But as you can see on your screen now, you can see that the top eight have come to almost a conclusion here as we can see that we've got the final heading up between Shade and Will. We had Shade route to the final through Salkran and then his semi-final match against Stu which takes him into the final and Will coming out against Luigi and then a semi-final match against Worm's Eye coming out victorious there and these two have already won a title in this series between them both. Will taking the Sun series shade taking the moon series so this is like the ultimate playoff between these two players i cannot wait to get into this one today it's going to be a great match to feature for us today and just showcase the talent of both of these players and how great they've done to get this far in this tournament and just before we get into it massive congratulations to each and every one of our players that have competed and taken part this season i really hope they have enjoyed the circuit there's lots of things to work on and improve on for next season but everything will be improving and we'll be taking everything under consideration to get into the circuit for next year and make it even bigger and better and more enjoyable for you guys so without further ado congratulations to shade and to will for getting this far i i just ca i can't call it if i had to call it now i don't know if i could we've got our moon series champion we've got our sun series champion going head to head in our ultra series championship final match here and remember this is not the this isn't the finish of the Ultra Series circuit. We've got the Invitational coming up very soon, which will be a live stream event where we'll have the top players who have all reached above 200 flinch squad points to get into that Invitational playoff for some incredible prizes. So that will be coming up very soon. But before that, we need to crown our Ultra Series champion. So let's get into the match without further ado and let's see who can take this one away. So you see we've got Shade on the top of your screen under the trainer name Lighty. And then Will on the bottom of your screen kicking off with Rick Quaza and Incineroar. Shade leading off with Lunala and Smeagol here. Both Pokemon uh, on each side have access to Fake Out. Smeagol likely going to be the faster one to disrupt Will's side of the field. So Will needs to be aware of that. There is the threat of Follow Me. And also the Trick Room from that Lunala that could potentially come up and scupper Will's plans. So Will needs to prepare for that adequately. He's going to switch out the Rayquaza into the Tapu Koko. Firstly taking a grip of that spore threat that the Smeagol throws out and potentially puts onto his side of the field. So Smeagol actually not going for the spore, just throwing out a helping hand, which is a big, big throw off from Shade's side of the field and pulling out the Z move to go straight into turn one with probably targeting down that Rayquaza helping hand menacing Moonrays Maelstrom coming out we're gonna have to cut this and come back into the target when it and it's into the Tapu Koko what was that Rayquaza slot Tapu Koko if it has got the sash that will be really useful for it to hang on this game but no sash here from Will some nice information there for Shade and he does take a very early lead but the Incineroar now able to get a snarl off get some chip damage onto the Smeagol more importantly potentially break a sash as well as breaking that Shadow Shield and weakening that Lunala with the special attack drop there from that snarl I'm going to see Moody activate on the Smeagol and it is the speed boosts so are not the best Moody boost here for Will but a really good one there for Shade. We are going to see the Kyogre come onto the field now for Will and uh, hit that Primal Reversion and turn into Primal Kyogre here. Bring that Primordial C with it. It's got to be a little bit worried though. The Smeagol's still going to be able to outspeed after that Moody boost. Although the, the Electric Terrain really helping out here. Preventing that Smeagol from causing any sleep disruption in this match. Um, we can and may see some speed control from that Lunala now. But the Smeagol just opting to go for a Spiky Shield. Not wanting to take any damage this turn. As we are going to see the Lunala go for that Tailwind. Set up that speed control before it does take a big attack from this Kyogre. And leave the field. We are going to just see an Ice Beam predict maybe a Groudon switch in here from Shade side of the field and the U-turn into that slot as well from the Incineroar but block there taking a little bit of chip damage on the side of the field so we're going to see another Moody boost nothing of an of note here as we see another helping hand come out from the Smeagol now 
from that Lunala boosting those attacks as we are going to see a Moongast being fired off. It's got to be into that Kyogre slot to get some big damage onto it there. Really nullifying that Snarl drop that it's just taken. So it will do some nice damage to the Kyogre. But Kyogre being so specially bulky, able to take that quite comfortably. And firing off a Water Spout now, able to take down the Smeagol and do some nice damage to this Lunala. And again, the Incineroar left here, really free to get off an attack. And it does take advantage of that U-turn this turn and uh, is going to help it reposition itself get something else out onto the field for will making sure that that Rayquaza comes out taking control of the field keeping that Incineroar in the back for that Intimidate which will be so important later on in this game especially if we do see something like the Groudon come out for Shade we are going to see the Morwell now hit the field for Shade something that we don't see very regularly in this format but obviously working really well and puts on a lot of pressure onto that Rayquaza uh, straight away with that Fairy's typing and the Steel typing there we're going to see the Lunala switch out and that Groudon finally make its way onto the field and it will be able to overwrite the rain now, take away the threat of the rain and those water power, those powerful water type attacks from the Kyogre here. Groudon Primal reverting, as I say, going to activate that desolate land and overwrite the rain. And what's the Moel going to do? You've got to think if the Rayquaza is maybe a Salt Fest, it does carry um, Earth Power, it could threaten that Moel. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see Will just preserve it for later on in this match. The Incineral come back onto the field, cycle that all important Intimidate onto both the Moel and that Primal Groudon here. As we see the Moel go for its Mega Evolution, going to turn into Mega Moel. And that Intimidate from Will onto that Mega Moel so important here because Mega Moel has access to huge power and can do some huge damage to opposing Pokemon. The Kyogre just opting to protect here. They don't want to take any risks. The Tailwind's still up on shit, so the field if you do see a play rough, it is into that Incineroar and with that huge power boost, even after the Intimidate, still doing some nice damage and getting an attack drop onto the Incineroar to boot. So the Kyogre now going to switch out for Will. The Rayquaza coming out onto the field. Can Shade predict this? We are going to see that Airlock activate now. Take away the bonus effects of the Sun as a Faker comes out into that Mowile. Not really too worried about the Groudon here. More worried about protecting that Rayquaza um, and the Groudon going for a Precipice Blades. It should be enough to get this Incineroar uh, even after the Intimidate. But the thing is now, it does pave the way for this Kyogre to come back onto the field for Will. So he's really manipulated the board and got himself set up very nicely as this Tailwind does end for shade really in a tight position because he needs to get the ground on out but getting the ground on out means taking a ton of damage from this Kyogre on anything incoming that Lunala's already damaged the Mowile's not the strongestly defensive Pokemon so it will take a lot of damage from whatever the Kyogre throws out and you've got to imagine the Rayquaza to boot will be throwing some damage that way as well we do see the Groudon switch out the Lunala going to hit the field the Mowile just going to protect this turn doesn't want to take any big damage here as we are going to be able to see a Dragon Ascent now into that Mowile slot and a Origin Pulse coming out from the Kyogre which should be enough to take down this Lunala and deny Shade any further speed control through that Pokemon. Uh, we do see the Groudon uh, is going to be able to come back in but the nice and the, the clever thing that Will has done here is not Mega Evolve that Rayquaza so it means when the Groudon does come back onto the field like it is doing now it means the Rayquaza can Mega Evolve and that Kyogre can utilize those powerful water type attacks really pressuring that Groudon going into this next turn. Now we do see Will go for that Mega Evolution. He is going to revert the Rayquaza into Mega Rayquaza and activate that ultimate weather, the Delta Stream. It's going to overwrite the Desolate Land and free up the Kyogre like we were just saying with those water type attacks. What is the Mowile going to do? We're going to see a Dragon Ascent come out from the Rayquaza. It's going to be into the Mowile. It's not going to be hitting it for super effective damage, but any damage at this point is enough because the Origin Pulse should be enough following up from this to get rid of that Moa. Definitely be enough to get rid of the Groudon. What is the speed tiers here for these Pokemon? The Kyogre are going to outspeed both. Gets the Origin Pulse off and will. Should take game one. Locking it up here and taking down the Groudon and the Moa in one clean hit. Will taking an early 1-0 lead in this set. So that is exciting here for Will and really well played. And really getting around that Tailwind which really really did make it possible to set that board position up and playing the Rayquaza so smartly going into that 
end turn of this game. So we'll hop straight over into game two. Things are heating up. The pressure is on Shade now to tie things up. Getting straight into this next one. We're going to see Will lead off this time around with the Tapu Koko and the Kyogre. Getting that Tapu Koko out early on here to prevent that Smeagol from abusing any of those sleep type attacks that it may carry as we do see Shade go with that same lead again with the Smeagol and the Lunala here. The electric terrain activating on the sp on the field and the Kyogre reverting into that primal Kyogre here. Now you've got to worry if you are Will that the Groudon can switch in at any point but the thing that puts the pressure on from Shade's side of the field is you've got to worry about that Tapu Koko switching out into the Rayquaza at any point. The, the, you getting that Groudon in to disrupt the weather because if that Rayquaza comes in and you switch in that Groudon and then those water type attacks are active again, you're going to lose your Groudon. But we aren't going to see that. We're going to see an Electro Web from the Tapu Koko. It's going to break the Shadow Shield on the Lunala. Going to break the Sash on the Smeagol. So nice. Reduce those speed stats once again. Take the Smeagol down after a follow me and uh, the Ice Beam will follow up in that direction and just knock that Smeagol out. Take that support option away. But does leave the Lunala free to set up some sort of speed control. But actually going for a Trick Room here. Showing that it is very versatile having the Tailwind and the Trick Room. So dual mods here as the Groudon now going to hit the field and give Shade a much better chance at wrapping up this game after that Electro Web, which does reduce the speed of the Pokemon on the opposite side of the field, hit by that attack. So Groudon going to come in, overwrite the weather again with its desolate land and activate that sunshininess to the field as we see. Will now in a little bit of a, a trickier position. You could switch the Rayquaza in, but do you want to take a, a Z move and a Precipice Blades on your Kyogre? Probably not. So seeing the Protect there on the Kyogre as the Moon Guys Beam coming out from this Lunala. Going to be into that Tapu Koko slot. Want to just sit on its Z move for now, not wanting to waste that as we do see the Moon Guys Beam into the Tapu Koko. It does survive, but a Precipice Blades following up here. Does it connect? That is the big thing it does. And this will be enough to take down the Koko. But again, paving the way for either Incineroar to come in now which frees up that fake out uh, turn for, for Kyle. A little bit of movement or do you bring in the Rayquaza here or do you bring in the Incineroar? Get the all important Intimidate off onto that Groudon. Pressure the fake out and switch in your Rayquaza now to try and get a big water type attack off into both of these Pokemon. But we're not gonna see that. We're gonna see the Kyogre just switch out. Rayquaza gonna come onto the field for Will now. He is gonna get a little bit momentum back. And uh, with the Trick Room up, you've gotta think that the Incineroar is in a nice position to um, to start throwing out some damage here. We're gonna see that Z move come out from the Lunala. It is the slowest thing in the field after that Electro Web, thanks to that type of Coco from that first turn attack here. So it will be into the Rayquaza. There's no point of going into the Incineroar here. We actually see in the Moon Guys Beam, it's into the Incineroar, not that Kyogre slot. So the Rayquaza got a free switch in here. You've got to think that the Incineroar has taken that pretty well resisted hit and the Precipice Blades will come out, but unfortunately, because the Incineroar is slowed and the ground, I'm going to get a U-turn off, going to preserve itself for later on in this game and get this Kyogre back onto the field. It will take a Precipice Blades, but it, the Groudon has been intimidated. But the, the main thing is that the Kyogre is back out onto the field. This Primordial Sea activating, although the, the Airlock is still in effect. So, still going to be uh, dampened by that ability from the Rayquaza. The Precipice Blades now coming out from the Groudon. Doing some decent damage there. Uh, the Z move burned from that Lunala, and that was the whole premise of what Will wanted to do here. I think was burn that Z move, make that Lunala less threatening going into these latter turns. The Mawile now going to hit the field for Shade, so everything's still up in the air. And whether or not Will wants to Mega Evolve this Ray this turn, and he does actually want to go for it. He wants to get some damage onto this Lunala, probably try and remove it from the field if he can to prevent any further speed control for the rest of this match. Because once that has run out, he's got no more options, and we've seen all ready that Will can achieve that board position with the Kyogre in the rain or in the Delta Stream or Airlock that he is going to be able to outspeed the, the Groudon and the Mawile and do some real work against these two Pokemon as long as that speed control is gone. That's a big thing here. Moon Guys Beam coming out from the Lunala into that Kyogre. Doing some nice damage there and then Origin Pulse coming out. Going to return do some big damage to that Mawile and a Crunch coming out from the Rayquaza into the Lunala. Going to take down the Lunala. Going to remove that speed control and the clock is ticking on these Trick Room turns. We've not got many turns left now as the Groudon once again hits the field and all Will needs to do is reposition his board position and get this Kyogre out with the rain up and prevent this Groudon from being that big threat that it is in the sun. It's still got the Trick Room turns to take advantage of. You've got to think that 
with the, the Incineroar in the back, it's a nice opportunity to bring it in, get this Intimidate off, protect your Kyogre, and then get the Rayquaza back in after the Incineroar goes down to hopefully Precipice Blades this turn from Shade side of the field. So we are going to see the Incineroar come in, the Mega Mawile going to now activate, get that Mega Evolution, and uh, you've got to worry, does it have Sucker Punch? If it has Sucker Punch, it's got the potential to you know, maybe deal with that Kyogre. Um, the Kyogre is quite low health at the minute, and even with the Intimidate drop, the Sucker Punch should still be enough to take it down. And the Sword Stance coming out from the Mobile. Shade taking all the chances he can in this to really come back into this match as the Precipice Blades followed up from that crowd on. Is it going to be enough to take down the Incineroar? That is the question. You need it to take it down, if you will. Uh, so you get that free switch into Rayquaza, but you don't. And the Incineroar hanging on barely here with three hit points. The Electric Terrain going to do disappear the trick room has ended and now the fake out coming out from the um, the incineral and the sucker punch as well and it is into the Kyogre things looking really good now for shade as he is going to be just facing down against this Rayquaza now but who outspeeds who? Does the Mawile outspeed the Incineroar or does the Incineroar outspeed the Mawile? And can the Rayquaza take down this Groudon before the Mawile can get an attack off? That is the question here. What are we going to see? The Rayquaza goes for an extreme speed. It is going to be into the Mawile. Enough to take that down. And you've got to think Rayquaza versus Groudon. You're in the driving seat, Will, now. You needed that Mawile to do a little bit more damage there as we see an eruption come out from this Groudon. Not going to really affect the Rayquaza too much. Does take down the Incineroar and Will looking like he's on track to take a second title, second championship in this Ultra Series circuit, um, in the Flinch Squad circuit, sorry, he's going to take the Ultra Series title as well, uh, we're going to see um, Will locking in with extreme speed now against this Groudon, it is just protecting this turn to scout out what this Rayquaza is, maybe, you know, giving off the um, the intimidation that it could be banded here, um, it's not revealing protecting, it's locking into that extreme speed, just staying in that you'd think you'd maybe opt for a different attack if you weren't going to see the ground on again just protect and erupt just in between turns that's the only option shades got for it but you can slowly see that will is going to be able to close this one out and uh Oh, just what a really great set from two really great players, you know, really backwards and forwards the whole way in an explosive set and nothing less than you would expect from both of these players coming in, both taking uh, one of the Ultra Series, uh, the Flinch Squad circuit titles already before and coming into the Ultra Series, the third one in this circuit for the season and uh, so nice to see the both of them in the final again and uh, one of them taking away two titles and uh, Will, as I said, did take that Sun Series title earlier in the um, uh, earlier in the year then Kunal Shade came in taking that Ultra Series uh, the Moon Series title and they're both fighting for this Ultra Series one to make it to two titles in this circuit so incredible and will one of these players be able to take the invitation you've got to think both favorites going into the invitation all the other players are going to be gunning to uh, go against them we're going to see the Rayquaza has run out of extreme speeds going to use the struggle now to take down this Groudon finally does take it down takes a bit of recoil survives and will coming out as your ultra series 2019 flinch squad champion so that is incredible massive congratulations to will and to shade as well a bit con commiserations there but what a great set for us to feature here and it's just a pleasure for me to be able to uh, to commentate over these matches and feature them on the channel and i hope you have all enjoyed them but will will be taking away a nice flinch squad ultra series trophy with him a nice esports shirt he'll be getting a plushie and some other bits and bobs as well as the other top four players will but more importantly those flinch squad points that i think will put will top of the invitational seeding board going into that invitational and uh, like i say i will post in the community section when the invitation will be going on it's a bit awkward with worlds coming up as well and i'm away on holiday the week after worlds so it may be the the first week in september when we do the invitational i will speak to the gang and see when everyone's available and we can get that sorted get a date marked in and then we can get that event underway and it's going to be a really special event with lots of bonus prizes there for the players and it'll be a really nice exhibition to just showcase these players and see what they can do and do a live stream for them before we kick into next season's 2020 Flint Squad circuit which is very exciting so we will be doing the circuit again next year it will be very exciting it will be bigger and better bigger prizes and uh, hopefully 
you know, if we get the numbers in, my end goal is to award travel awards to players, to worlds, for those players that don't quite get into those top echelons of top 16 in Europe or top 8 in America. Then we have something else that they can maybe fall on, but it's all about getting the numbers in and getting that prize money there for us to be able to provide those prizes. But that is the end goal with this, you know, to provide another route for players to get into the world championships without having all of those financial constraints, maybe holding them back, because I can totally relate to that from my time playing where sometimes you just can't go because you don't have the cash to um to get over to the worlds and that is heartbreaking and i never want that to happen to anyone and it's really good practice as well the group of guys we've got in the circuit have improved like immensely it's really nice seeing them throughout the whole season improve so much and become these like incredibly strong players and players that i really admire and and look and think wow you you're going places you're going to do things in the circuit so it's a really good place to practice just mix and and be amongst a really nice group of people as well as take part and for some amazing prizes as well so that wraps up the flinch squad circuit for this season it's been amazing like i say we've got the invitational coming up which is the big event for the big trophy for the big prizes for those special players that have earned that place in that tournament at the end of the season so i'll keep an eye out for that like i say it will be a live streamed event and it'll be a lot of fun but again once again huge congratulations to Will, massive congratulations to Shade, our other finalists today and all of our other players that have taken part in the circuit this season it's been a pleasure we'll be back for more action very soon in our next season so if you'd like to take part make sure you keep an eye out on the channel follow me on twitter and also check out the patreon because that is where all the information is and will be for next season's flinch squad circuit and um, so i'll just say thank you very much for tuning in hope you've enjoyed today's episode let me know what you thought of the circuit this year of the the matches today and who what your favorite team and things have been and uh, i'll look forward to reading through those very soon so take it easy guys have a great summer and we'll be back with more flinch squad circuit very soon so until then take care and bye bye